agency. It's true. Your eyes do not deceive you. I did not upload for two weeks, and I'm finally back with a one hour tournament super special blunder back in the mix. And it's not just one game. In fact, it's not even just two games. It's three tournament Gen 9 OU games. It's true. I'm back. Who said those famous words? <laughs> I think it might have been Michael Jordan. So we're here today, right? I have tournament coverage. I cannot even tell you the last time I posted my own tournament from when it was like a real thing. So as you guys know, I haven't played tournament in a while, more than a year. I played last year, actually. Smoke on World Cup. I went two and two. And then I think I played, yeah, I played Smoke on Champion League after, and I went 4-4, four, four, no, 4-5 four, actually. So yes, last year I went 6-7. and seven. My games weren't even bad. I remember my first game back to tournament last year, after I hadn't played in two years, it was a 6-0. But I didn't upload it, because, you know, I gotta be in a very tournament-focused mood, where like, because if y'all remember, if y'all watched my videos back 2015 to 19, I used to be uploading my own tournament games every month because I was always signing up for these tournaments, playing some playoffs type shit. You know, that's why there was that meme about me winning a trophy because I, I was signing up for everything. I was going far in everything. I had to win. But then, you know, as time goes on, you know, after I lost, after after Swamper hit that will o wisp I was like, all right, it's time to take a step back. <laughs> Family. Direct quote Vin Diesel. So anyways, we're back here today. It's been fucking forever. I decided to sign up for the World Cup of Pokemon. Um generation nine i love it it's no secret i think it's a very very fun generation i'm very pro terastalize as everybody knows i got nothing to hide about that terra is extremely epic and yeah i just like the metagame post home there's a lot of new shit there's definitely some crazy stuff in this metagame i'm not going to act like everything is equal there's some stuff that definitely feels you know a little bit broken okay <laughs> gambit but you know it is what it is overall i really really like gen nine gen eight is like whatever to me I know, y'all think that I hate Gen 8. I just think it's fucking boring. It's As a competitive game, playing the shit versus someone at a high level, I will always find some joy in that. But from a spectator sport, I think the shit is ass. So that's just, that's just, it is what it is. Anyways, here I am back at it. Gen 9 OU. So, World Cup of Pokemon. I'm playing from Team Northeast, who I played for last year, because I'm located in uh, fucking New York. Um, I used to play for Team Canada back in the day, like eight, like, eight to five years ago yeah 2016 to 19 but um i can't play for them anymore because back then when i signed up there was no ip checking or none of that shit they didn't really care so i was like yo i'm from canada and the reason i went to canada is just because i had all my friends on that team and i wanted to play with my friends i couldn't give a fuck about like you know try harding back then i was just like let me play with my friends let's, let's run it up um but now you know it's 2023 this is just you know modern day technology i live in new york so i'm playing with northeast doesn't matter though i love i love the team a lot of my buddies are on this team, some strong players, so I had no, you know, complaints. CTC is on the team as well, aka the GOAT. So, you know, I had no fear. I knew that CTC was going to be making me the best teams ever. I know my play is pretty good. I basically set the background for you guys. And now we are here with the three games. So, like I had said, it had been a year since I had played any tournaments, but I mean, I used to play so many tournaments, so I didn't think there would be too much rust. I also fucking play ladder a lot. I got a lot of high ladder alts that be in the top 10, 20. I just don't upload with them. No cap. I really do be on there. And I've smoked a lot of y'all. Remember that. But I got this team from CTC. Let's get into the first battle versus Starfire Scarlet. So you got three weeks to play versus three opponents. There are a bunch of pools. And basically, uh, your team has to go 13 and 11 out of 24 games to progress to the quarterfinal stage. Uh, so there's 16 teams on a pool stage and then eight go on to the playoffs. So, yep, my team has to go 13-11. There's eight pools for our team, and so I got three opponents to play. I waited till the last weekend to play all my games, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So, in fact, I even played a game today, Sunday, as this is going up. And then I played one yesterday, and I played one the day before on Friday. I waited till the last minute, kind of, just because I had some family stuff going on. I had to, like, leave the state and shit, and, you know, I had to put it off. But it didn't matter. The metagame hadn't changed too much. I was feeling confident. CTC had made me some strong-ass teams. I'm practicing a lot. Let's get right into it. So first opponent, Starfire Scarlet. Now, this guy, I had seen a lot of his games. I actually know who this is. Some of you may even remember his name. I uh, used to go by the username AC2B. This guy's part of the agency. Very respectable player. So, you know, I battled this guy before on stream. Cool dude. He's giving me teams. In fact, I've even uploaded short on lives and been like, shout out my boy AC for the team. But he became pretty powerful. He leveled up, got a name change to some powerful shit. Starfire Scarlet, like he's sending pussies to the skies. 
and he told us that uh, he told me that he fucking was ready to go. I actually even uploaded a, uh, a series of his. He made it to the Smogon Tour playoffs. So I knew this guy was no slouch. He was my first opponent, and I was like, all right. So my style when it comes down to it, and I have to play in a tournament game, is usually just bring bulky offense. I've never, I, I don't stall. The last time I stalled in some shit that mattered was 2016. Like, I don't use stall because, like, for the most part, I'm pretty confident in my ability to play versus anybody you know i'm not saying i'm not gonna sometimes make bad plays nobody's perfect but the way i my direct my like the way i try to play tournaments is bring a bulky offensive team i bring the same style like every game i just want a team that gives me enough like paths to outplay whatever happens you know because i always have confidence that i can outplay the opponent should the turns go correctly and even if they don't go correctly you can always get something back that's why you'll never see me running no dual screens shit you'll never see me running no fucking grassy terrain x sneezler that shit's never coming from me because i like i don't want to leave it up to chance i don't want to get blocked out by one pokemon and lose that's not to say that some of my teams aren't weak to some shit this team's weak to backscalibur for example this team could be weak to stall to a degree but i don't know i like my odds with this style of team the most so let's explain the team ctc gave me some heat ctc gave me some heat buddy uh shout out to my boy obi as well because i believe he made the prototype for this team with sd samurai and then ctc you know he changed the sets for the way i like it let me break down what we have here we have a iron valiant because as the meme goes i always be sacking the meme on and then i go out to iron valiant so did you really think in my first tournament game back i wasn't gonna bring all reliable did you really think i wasn't gonna bring it and did you really think i was gonna bring great tusk when landorus t is back no the real agents already knew that iron valiant and landorus were already penciled in on the team samra as well i've made no secret like i've made it no secret that i literally think the shit's broken like yeah, as a pokemon it's like maybe not broken stats wise and all the shit the move is broken right i'm not saying ban ceaseless edge but fundamentally that move's cheap nobody can convince me otherwise and i knew i was bringing this shit because the fuck i'm obviously going to use the mon that is able to get up spikes with its signature move like come on now rest of the team is pretty straightforward cinder ace plus samurai might seem a little confusing because it's like dude no way you get up the spikes just to court change them back Shh. simply i don't get up spikes if they have spikes on their side and then i court change them back it's not like samrod only has to click ceaseless edge this shit has razor shell as well it's not some weak guy you know what i'm saying so cinderace is really just insurance uh versus you know ting lu teams that want to put up all the hazards because my team would otherwise get crushed by spikes i got you know four pokemon that all get hit by spikes um and landers does take rocks chip as well so it's not like that thing's immune to hazards so i knew i needed a cinderace there we're in the bulky cinderace that's my favorite set max hp max speed will o'est buter and powerball court change used it many times in you know lives and whatnot Samurai. All right, so Samurai is the point of this team. This shit is some heat. Shout out to my boy Deej because he showed us the set. Swords Dance Samurai. So we got Swords Dance, Razor Shell, Aqua Jet, Seasless Edge. I knew I wanted to use Swords Dance Samurai after CTC showed me some calcs. Mystic Water Razor Shell from Samurai is a 135 base power move when you factor in sharpness and the Mystic Water boost. Razor Shell is extremely strong, buddy. 135 base power. Are you shitting me? Are you shitting me? That's like that's like this thing is going for, I, I don't know, it's like Hydro Cannon every turn, but it's a physical joint. To give you an example of how strong this shit is, plus two Razor Shell can one hit KO Corviknight after rocks and that kind of thing. So a lot of times people just think Samurai, oh shit, let me, you know, I gotta keep spamming Ceaseless Edge, spike, spike, spike. Sometimes you can just attack, buddy, and fucking Oko whatever is in front of you. This is not some slouch. Sharpness is a very good ability. Lander's T is all reliable. We got the Spadef set from last generation because Zapdos is on everybody's team. I'm not taking no Hurricane, right? I If I have a physically defensive spread, Hurricane's going to do 60%. This one can take, I believe, four Hurricanes. It's four hit KO'd by Hurricane, but you also got to hit all your Hurricanes. So, like, fuck out of here. My Lander's is a pretty good check for all it is. This Lander's used to have Grass Knot until 20 minutes before the game when I made it Stone Edge because I scared myself into Zapdos coming. And then I saw this game and I was like, dude, why do not I have Grass Knot? Amoongus is all reliable. Red card, three attack, spore. You guys know what it is. Like, Amoongus is cheap. I use this shit every generation. I literally love this Pokemon. You guys know I love this shit. I'm a, I'm a dirty Amoongus enjoyer. I love this shit. Every, I bring this shit to so many tournament games. Come on, this is all reliable. Spore somebody, you know, Regenerator back in the mix. His <laughs> shit stays alive forever. I love Amoongus. And then good old Specs Dragapult because you need, you need a bazooka on the team, right? You need something fast. I can't have Valiant with Speed Booster uh, be my speed control for the most part. So I was very happy with this team. All right, look at his team now. He's got a pretty regular team as well. Specs Paul, uh, Chili Reception, Spadef Slowking, regular King Gambito, Big Tusk, Stealth Rocker, Choice Ban Meow Skirata, 
and then a regular defensive Rotom. So I looked at the matchup and I was like, okay, biggest threats on his team are certainly going to be Miascarada. Because when I saw the team, I was like, it's probably Choice Banded, given the fact that he has a Gambit already and he has a Pult. I don't think he needs a Scarf Meow. Like, I don't understand why you'd need that kind of speed control. Also, Scarf Meow seems like self sabotage in a metagame where Zapdos is everywhere. What the fuck are you going to do? Do U turn? Knock off for 30% and instantly get paired? Like, what is this? You're not doing that shit. So I figured Bandit was the way to go. And I figured Bandit actually could be scary because even if my Amoongus is full Fizz Def, U turn does whittle it down and I'm not boots. So Tusk is able to get rocks up pretty easy on my team, too. It's not like I can go hard into Cinderace on a Tusk. So I knew I had to watch out for that thing, especially. Uh, Landers is a Spidef, so Flower Trick's going to do a lot. But I knew basically looking at the team that I had a way out of this. The other thing I really regret is that when I had used this team, because this team is from like two weeks ago. So even though I battled two days ago, CTC made this team like two weeks ago, and I already knew I was going to bring this shit when my game was going to happen because, you know, I liked the six. I didn't think the metagame would change that much and make this shit uh, unviable. But anyways, I, I was using a Swords Dance uh, Valiant at the time. Swords Dance Encore. Right before the game, I was like, dude, I don't think I should use Swords Dance. I'm going to make it Moonblast on uh, Moonblast CC. What's it called? Moonblast CC knockoff. But anyways, as you can see, it made no difference. And SD probably would have been even better. But, I mean, they both were good in this game. So, with all that being said, the fucking 11-minute intro. Apologies. Let's hop right into it, shall we? So, I lead off with Amoongus. He goes for the knockoff turn one. Does 53% showing that it's banded. I mean, already looking at the team, I knew this wasn't going to be sashed. Either way, I'm going to sludge bomb here. Because he's not going to U-turn on my red card and let somebody get spored. I already knew that shit's not happening. So, oh shit, I clicked reset, sorry. So, <laughs> you know it's been a while that since I've clicked fucking watch replay when this happens. Goes for 53%, I go for the sludge bomb, 81%. That's that good ship. No poison, but whatever. He basically gave me Meowskarada's HP. Also, Samurai has Aqua Jet, so he basically put this shit in range immediately. So I was very happy with turn one. Yeah, my Amoongus takes a lot, but fuck it, we can get out of this situation. Now here, I'm pretty sure he's not going to want to sack his Meow turn one, so I go for Spore. As he goes into the biggest threat in the entire world, King Gambit, and gives it to me. So after the first two turns, I was like, holy, I'm feeling happy, right? You just... Dude, if, if you let King Gambit get spored, you're obviously going to be feeling on top of the world. Like, holy shit, the biggest threat is now neutralized. King Gambit is the scariest terrestrialized Pokemon, too. There's no, you know, there's no real argument against that, I think. I think this is truly the scariest Terra Pokemon, and most people would agree. So, to get Meowth already at 19, and to get Gambit slept, it, like, to me, it felt like, holy shit, I just got two of the best first turns possible. If he did decide to knock off and do, like, 35% on my spore... I didn't really care because while I would be low, I would simply go to Ga uh, Valiant right after. I, yes, I would waste my booster, but it, fuck it. Like, it, I wouldn't be staying in. And it's okay. I was ready to waste my booster as well if he triple knocked. Like, I, yeah, double knocked, I mean. Anyways, I spore this. Now, I know he could possibly switch out into Tusk or Rotom. Uh, but I was like, I cannot Grass Knot here and let this burn off a sleep turn. Because he could also just be like, ah, let me burn off a sleep turn. In retrospect, maybe Grass Knot was fine, but... I also don't want Sloking G to come in and get a free future site. Either way, I'm going to switch out myself here. And I think I bring in my Lander's T because I was like, let me get up rocks. No, I bring in I bring in this, Samurott. What did I predict? I think I predicted him to either try to burn off a turn or go Sloking G. That's what I expected. Facts. That is exactly what I expected. Burn off a turn or go Sloking G. He makes a good play going to Great Tusk, knowing that I'm not going to Grass Knot. I was like, fuck, because I kind of like thought about it, but I was like, dude, I cannot Grass Knot in the Sloking and lose all my momentum after two turns. You guys know how I play. I play like a fucking dog. Every turn, oh, I gotta, oh my god, I can't give him one turn or I'm going to lose. Oh, you know, I, I'd be playing like that sometimes. Sometimes I even get in my own head doing that shit, but it is what it is. I bring in Samurai right here. I switch out into Landers T. Now, this is a misplay in my opinion. If you look at his team, he has no Stealth Rocker and he has no Cinderace. So you know that the Tusk is Stealth Rock. The Tusk being Stealth Rock means it also has to be Spin. Because, like I said, there's no reliable removal on this team. This shit gets obliterated by spikes. Like, one Ting Lu would destroy this team. If great, like, so Great Tusk has to be the Spinner and the Rocker. But part of me was like, dude, he has U-Turn Meow Skirata, Volt Switch Rotom Wash, Chili Reception Slow King, probably has U-Turn Dragapult. He's running some fucking Volt Turn E team. What if he has a Jack Button CC? So in my, I tricked myself here into thinking, okay, maybe he has CC. My Samurai can't stay in. When in reality, it is so obvious if you look at this team that this is Rocks, EQ, like this is Rocks plus Spin. So how can it have CC plus a Jack Button? That's not a real set, first of all. You, if, we're in a metagame where Zapdos is on every team. 
you're not going to what are, what are you going to do versus zapdos close combat it for 17 and get parried like that's that's not going to happen so i tricked myself on this turn like looking back like it's not like oh it's not so egregious where it's like oh my god i made such a bad plan i should have stayed in but it was like you i should have taken a second and really looked at it and been like no dude this is not fucking this is not cc like i can stay in and i think i really should have because as you can see on this turn it goes for ice spinner now revealing that yes this is fully a defensive tusk i know it's a defensive tusk because ice spinner only did 56 i'm a full spit f landers t if this was offensive that shit would have blown my landers away other than a lot more anyways i go for rocks here and now i'm like hmm i've sort of misassessed the situation right first two turns went very well but the next few were definitely a little a little questionable um i really should have made the call of just razor shelling on the great tusk figured out you know what was going on with this guy it's item and all that stuff now here because he's minus one and i know he's defensive based on that damage i know i have two possible switch-ins i can go into a Moongus, which will take about 30 uh, or i can go into dragapult i figured you know what i'm just going to bring in my dragapult because i know he's defensive if he does want to spin or i'll block the shit i know he's not stealth rock ice spinner knockoff eq that, that that's not happening he's stealth rock ice spinner eq rapid spin that's a set the mammoth swine larp we've seen this tusk many times so i was like whatever i'll go into my pult i'll take about 45 it's not the worst case scenario because this gambit is sleeping and i can immediately start putting on pressure i go into my pult here right because i'm like okay this is the mid ground but unfortunately <sighs> we get crit so i was like no this is devastating bro not in the game back so the last the last few turns have been so fucking bad i was like dude this is this is not good. We have a 38% Lando, no Pult, and he got his own He got his own Pult that looks like it's just going to Draco everybody out the moon. So I was like, okay, this is very bad. I'm going to bring a Sam right here, Sam L. Stacks, and shout out CTC for the nicknames. You know them shits is always on point. Come on now. I bring in Sam L. Stacks in here because at this point, I'm like, wow, I've made a grave mistake. By switching out on the obviously defensive Great Tusk, I let this shit get off the goob nut. Got up rocks, killed a... Killed a pult, did a mazillion of landers. This tusk is turning into mega tusk right now. I go into Sam L. Stacks and I go for the razor shell. 66 means he is fully, fully fizz def because I'm mystic water. I told y'all, that's a super nuke. I'm faster too. So here I was like, no, I'm so stupid. Why did I do that dumb shit? Why did I switch out? But whatever, we got to play back into the right hands. Now I know here he's going to switch out because I already saw from the way he kept his meow that this guy doesn't like sacking Pokemon for no reason. Um... And so I go for the Seasless Edge here. I get 35% off on Rotom, which I was like, hell yeah. Getting in Iron Valiant range. Cinderace is back in the mix. Like, this is perfect for me. I do a, a good 35%. So I'm like, okay, even with the crit, we can definitely come back from this shit. No need to panic, right? My pult was really good, but it's fine. We can always get our way out of this situation. I go into my Amoongus here as he Volt switches out and brings in his G-King. Okay, so g king i was like okay let's see i think i can just bring in my landris i am spadef he's likely to go for either thunder wave chili reception or sludge bomb he goes right for the sludge bomb gets the insta poison i was like fuck dude i need this landris sack though goes into tusk this is an ass play on my part i go for rocks because i was like dude surely he's not going to tusk on eq anyways he goes tusk and i give him the free spin i was like dude this is not good dude i go into val kill her aka a classic nickname of the agencies goes for the rapid spin i go for the moon blast here at this point he sacks it because knows that if i go for sd on the switch he could just have thrown the game massively by doing that in comes sloking g here i'm like all right i'm terra steel i was considering terra steel and terra dark but i was like fuck it let's go with terra steel because if i play an opposing valiant with moon blast i want to turn into a steel type I turn steel here because i'm like this is the best mon to terra regardless but no bro has the mid ground aka thunder wave aka a oh, big fuck you to all skills all skilled players everywhere when i see t-wave i'm like dude what are you doing using that dirty dirty yellow magic move anyway i turn into a steel type god damn it i wish i had that dark type but of course right before the game i super sabotage my own shit uh, i knock off there for 67 i was like fuck ball sack anyways i know he's switching out here he cannot sack that thing by any means so i just go for a cc on the switch because i know rotom or whatever's happening here goes into rotom i mean doesn't go into rotom sacks me out I go into my landers here and sack it to rocks, and I'm like, okay, this is looking pretty fucking bad. Dragapult kills everything. This thing is weakened. Samrat's at 48. I was like, okay, I got exactly one play here. I need to go into my Cinderace, and I need to bluff the Sucker Punch and court change these off. And I am able to do that. Brings in his Rotom, and this turn, right after court changing, this is when I was like, okay, shit is now finally back in my hand. Bluffing the Sucker Punch is all I had to do. So... 
hydro pumps into this that's another that's that's a definitely a big misplay by him of hydro pumping because all momentum is gone he knows from that court change that i'm not liberal offensive so it should have always been a volt switch from him i don't know maybe he thought i was gonna wisp on volt switch i don't know but that him hydro pumping there is not a good play it was a it was the only way to lose momentum i foul play into this thing which is great because i've already knocked off its boots right so i'm actually getting good chip and negating any and all regenerator this is all this is all going according to plan i go into samuel l stacks in here because i know chili reception's coming out and if i stay into foul play on chili reception what happens he's just going to be able to bring in that pult and do some shit i'm not letting that shit happen at all so i go into sam l stacks and to keep up all types of offensive momentum right even this rocks chip it can it can help us win the game i go into amoongus again because i'm not sacking sam l stacks in yet i need to get this shit a little bit lower so it's in ceaseless edge ceaseless edge range in comes this again i predict him to go for thunder wave here not chili reception and that's why i go for the foul but he gets the fucking full para i was like what is this shit thunder wave thunder wave thunder wave anyways here i predict him i know he's gonna go for the sludge bomb so i foul play here if he chilies there it could get shy but i know he's not gonna chili there so now i go into samurai knowing the chili's coming out again we, we're getting the good end of the the shit right even with all the whatever thunder wave shit we're you know it's fine it's it's whatever goes for drake here luckily amoongus being the hard body pokemon it is is gonna live that no matter what right it only does 74 because my valiant is teared into a steel type it resists it not to say that the fairy version wouldn't have obviously been better into draco because it's immune but regardless i'm able to live that because it's minus two and now i know i can live a minus four draco at 32 percent so somehow i was able to get out of here without losing a mon y'all gotta remember that sometimes you have to let the mon go but in crunch times like this when you know every kill counts you need to save your mons and i'm actually able to so i'm actually able to get out of this situation without losing a mon at all also he brought this shit in and just decided i wasn't sucker punch by the way when i saw that i was like what the fuck what about sucker punch <laughs> anyways um he goes into Sloking G here. I know Sloking is coming in, which is why I go for knockoff over Moonblast. Because, dude, you cannot let up pressure in a situation like this. Here he goes into this. I should have fucking CC'd, but I went for Moonblast. Either way, it doesn't matter. We still do a lot of damage. We're not sacking this for no reason. I have a whole ass Amoongus for this very reason. We do not need to sack this Pokemon by any means. In comes Dragapult again. It's getting lower and lower. I bring in Val as I believe the Draco just comes out. Now, I was thinking about the game from this position on. And I was like, okay. My Samuel Staxon lives draco the shit does 57 max because i have a good amount of hp EVs. so i know minus two Draco only does 57 max the issue is i'm aqua jet not sucker punch so this thing can come back in and, and kill me you need to get this shit to like 34 percent for it to die to plus two aqua jet you need to get it to 34 percent. so i was looking at the game and i was like it's likely gonna have to come down to my cinderace living a draco meteor which it has a 50 percent chance to do it's like a 50 percent chance to live draco and then getting off a pyro ball however he just decides to draco which is very, very surely a misplay on his part. He goes for the, Dra uh, the Draco, thinking, I think in his mind, he was like, let me just chip, 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 and Shadow Ball afterwards. However, this is a staunch misplay because he needed the HP on this shit and he needed to go for the Draco Meteor roll later. Now he goes into Rotom, but I just Power Ball, knock that shit out from there because we've already got it low with the switches to Samurott, etc. And, you know, going to Amoongus. He brings in this. I go into my own Amoongus on the Shadow Ball. He's now at 34%. I'm going to go right into Cinderace here and sack it. Now, the reason I sacked Cinderace is because if he decided to go into his Sloking G there as I sacked my Amoongus and I got full parrot or some shit, I can lose that. Sh I can lose from that position. And I cannot let that happen. Going to Cinderace puts him in a checkmate position. I now bring in my Samurai. I click the fucking Swords Dance, which we've been hiding since the entirety of the game. SD Samurai, this is a, you know, they, they ain't seen it like this yet. We SD, we raise a shell, knock that out. In comes this, but it's too late. Aqua Jet gone. In comes the King Gambit. That shit is sleeping. A lot of y'all be thinking King Gambit bulky this, King Gambit bulky that. Let me show you a real dark type. One hit KO. Gone. And that's going to be that. Samurai gets off the super goob sweep. That shit was pretty crazy. I'm not going to lie. After the, the fucking Ice Spinner crit and the misplays I made around Tusk, I was like, dude, we might be goobed. But fortunately, cool calm and collected we got out of there so 1-0 1-0 so 1-0 on friday pretty good i was feeling myself for sure definitely i was like well played it's i'm very happy to win with a team that i picked out that ctc made for me so long ago i mean you guys have, who have seen my tournament battles in the past you can take one look at this team and be like oh yeah this is definitely a team that you know he would use this is definitely a team i'd use you know this is this is my shit i always use a team that looks like this so i was very happy the shit did his job you can always play better so there's definitely some turns i could have played better but after the after the pult got crit and uh 
Well, actually, besides stealth rocking into Tusk, I think I did everything correct, like very correct, and, you know, got my way out of there pretty good. So, can't really complain. So, let's set the scene. Game two, yesterday, Saturday, Blunder versus Dugza. So, looking at teams, I am using a Backscalibur team. This is a very, very famous team right now. This team was created by, I believe, Mind Gaming, who was another, uh, you know, battler. I actually played him last year uh, in Smogon Champion League. He's a great player. Um, I played him in a bunch of like for fun games as well uh, in generation nine. He's just, you know, great player. He made this team and it, this is like a genius team. This is probably the best uh, team post home meta. Uh, the reason being is that this team six is just so damn solid. This team has been spammed a lot in the World Cup tournament. And, you know, I like swagging with, you know, random shit, but I didn't really have a team to bring versus this guy. I didn't really prepare anything in specifics. And when I was looking through this guy's teams for the most part dugza i was like most of his shit gets beaten by sub dragon dance backscalibur so this team this is you know affectionately called the german backscalibur team on smogon because this shit has been spammed like anything in the world cup it is just a very very good team the german team themselves brought this shit like 10 times i think they probably won like nine or all 10 times with it which is just them flexing and showing like you know we really we really do this gen, gen, gen 9 shit we can use the same team and win every game like and that is quite respectable to me like that is that is definitely a flex anyways i brought this team because i was like what the fuck dude if this shit is that hot let the gut let the, let, let the goat use it you know what i'm saying so i loaded it up and i put very good nicknames on it as well with ctc to show you know homage to the to the to the german world cup team because they're tearing it up with this shit and you know we respect this team a lot ctc was like dude i wish we made this shit. i was like dude i wish you made this shit too because this is this is a gorgeous build so looking at it Tusk is a regular bulk up rapid spin earthquake knockoff set. No stealth rock on Tusk because Cinderace gets off the rocks anyway. Slow King G, chilly reception in the back Scalibur. That's the whole point of this team. Uh, Slow King G keeps going for chilly reception and the backs is ice body, not thermal exchange or whatever this shit's called. So when you have an ice body backs with sub DD leftovers, you're getting back 12.5% every turn. Brother, this is like this is like Poison Hill Gly score, except it's a backs people the ice body tech let it be known let it be known i did use this core with regular slow king last uh, october or no no last november sorry game didn't exist in october last november at a tournament let it be known street snow street snow anyways moving on uh yeah so that's the combo i went with sub dd backscalibur because a lot of people had been using sd backs on this team which i think is great too like the the, the like i said the reason this team is so good is because you can change basically all the sets on it and it can still be you know very potent this is just six good as fuck pokemon which is why i'm just like damn why didn't we make up this well why didn't we come up with come up with this shit <laughs> um uh but anyways the backs is sub dd like i said my opponent dugs up from what i saw he just uses a lot of bulky offensive teams off like just regular shit like the type of shit i would use and all that stuff is notoriously weak to backscalibur because backscalibur is not fair first of all i've been saying this shit for months this shit is just karen b2 all right it, this shit is cheap but whatever so Bex, I, I was like, I looked at his team too, and I'm like, wow. When I saw the matchup, I was like, I'm going to destroy him with sub DD Bex. What is this? Like, this shit is going to get obliterated by sub DD Bex. The counter is Rotom and Landorus, right? And the dog is Choice Bandit. I already know this team because I've seen it used in tournament. My teammate made it and used it. Star Master. So I already knew all the, like, the sets. And also, if you look at the team, it's very obvious what the sets are. Enamorous on this team is Specs. I probably should have used Life Orb. CTC told me before the game that Life Orb is now better, but I was like, no, dude, I can use Specs and I'll just predict every turn correctly. And he was like, all right, if you trust yourself to predict all the turns correctly, then use Specs. I was like, yep, I'll just use Specs. I should have had Life Orb, though, because it's way easier if you look at his team to just click Moonblast and Earth Power. And you'll see in this game how even though I was Specs, it didn't matter that much just because of Slow King's fat ass being able to still pivot in. Cinderace is regular, bulky, uh, U-turn, Will-O-Wisp, Pyro Ball. You know the deal. I brought the shit last game i'm gonna bring it again because you know what the worst shit i can run into in this metagame is fucking ting lu plus five skillless setup sweepers i'm not going out sad like that bro i'm bringing a cinderace i'm court changing all those bitches back up yeah now your whole team taking mad hat i'm not going out sad to a ting lu that leads off gets up six hazards and a sneezler comes in and kills my whole team you fuck do i look like losing like that never gonna happen so i'll bring cinderace to make sure that doesn't happen same with dual screens cheese no fucking way i'm getting put in that articuno galar pack with someone no that's never gonna happen to me i'm court changing that shit off immediately you're never gonna you're never gonna cheese me with no screens you, i will not be cheesed all right lastly king gambit this shit's broken i'm not some hipster i'm not gonna not bring king gambit to world cup come on now this shit's broken so we got this team it's just a very you know good team opponent side very basic u-turn rocks landorus u-turn bulky cinderace chili reception slow king volt like volt it's just the most standard volt turn choice banded dog it's like it's literally the same shit that this starfire brought it's literally the same shit for the most part right 
Choice Banded uh, Meow Scarada over Choice Banded Dog, and then Pult. He didn't even he didn't even want another offensive line. He figured a defensive one would be better. So I was like, okay, looking at the team, we just got to play good with backs. Let's hop right into it. So, oh, let me set the stage. My team Northeast, I'm not gonna hold you. We were not doing too well in this tournament. A lot of thrown games, right? We we were a little sloppy. It is what it is. Can't always be can't always be perfect, but we had to. We, you know, we had, to, we had to get shit right. Every game was starting to get really, really important. So from this position, we had to go 6-2, and two, including my game. So if I win, we need to go now 5-2 and two to qualify, right? So I was like, I got it. Don't even trip. I'll win this shit. So I lead off with my Slow King G. Bad lead, bro. Bad. What, is, what is he doing? Why did he lead Slow King G in the land? Ugh. I'm not wise. I'm sorry to say. So the reason I let Slow King G is because I was like, dude, he's going to lead Rotom Wash into my tusk check this shit out fortunately he led landers t so shit didn't work out off the rip i was like oh no exit the field immediately and i go into a namris as he goes right for a u-turn i go into dirndl burndl 777 this is a myth this is not the right nickname it's supposed to be dirndl burndl 777 shout out to my germans and then so i switch out from slower kraut and i bring this shit in i go for earth power here as he hold on my bad u-turns out brings in slow kizzle right and now we got a fresh turn here. Now I'm thinking on turn two, nobody sludge bombs into my own slower crowd. Why would you lose all that momentum? You're also not going to sludge bomb into a great tusk. Why would you lose all that momentum? You're going to future sight every time here. I was very sure he was going to future sight here. So I go right for the earth power. I know I can die to sludge bomb, but I also know that he's not going to make that play because you got it's just a fundamental understanding of Pokemon is that you do not predict the lead correctly you turn out and then on turn two decide you know what actually let me give up all momentum that's not how people play the fact that he showed me turn one how important momentum is to him by you turning instead of getting up rocks because why the fuck first of all would you not rocks right he's probably thinking forget all that cinderace is gonna put him off see i already know he's thinking more ahead his perspective is nope i'm gonna just kill everything that's that's what i realized off turn one so i was like dude he's gonna future sight chili or some shit like that i'm getting the hit off i go for a specs earth power 369 special attack my ass that shit does 56 percent literally nothing so this is where i was like dude i should just had life orb because even if i have specs i don't do any damage when it's did 56 my jaw dropped i was like what dude i'm specs so now you can see the slow king can basically come in forever on my enamorous i thought because i was specs i would be free to beat this but no this shit took nothing like it took negative and now I know the next time it comes in, it's going to be a 77. So this shit has not changed yet. So I was like, okay, I got to be pretty careful of the slow king. Anyways, here I'm like, a future sight's coming out. I need to figure out a way where I don't get forced of a future sight to hit one of my important Pokemon. The only two Pokemon on my team that can take a future sight are Gambit, who I do not want coming out prematurely, and slow king G, who slow king G can come out, but it cannot come out against an unfavorable Pokemon. So here I go right into my backs, knowing that he knows I'm specs, meaning Landers or Rotom Wash has to come out. If Rotom Wash comes out, I'll set up a substitute and soak that future side up next turn. That's no that's no problem. If he goes Landers T, I know that he's gonna switch out hard into either Rotom or Zamazenta. So I don't give a fuck about that. I know I myself can just go into my Sloking G and soak up whatever's going on. So I go into my Sloking G as a result, and I'm able to outplay the future sight turn pretty well. So I've already basically fixed the bad lead. You can see in this uh, game how important every turn is in Gen 9. That's that's my honest opinion. I think every single turn in Gen 9 is so important, which is why I try not to even use shit like Heatran with Magma Storm, because if you miss one move in this generation, it feels sometimes like you have just fucked up everything. Samurai, I love that mod, but as you can see, I run SD a lot, because even though all the moves can miss, I don't want my Samurai to have to Seasless Edge, and if I miss Seasless Edge, I lose. That's not a that's not a valid game plan, right? Hacks happens in Pokemon, and it sucks to lose to Hacks, but even the games I lose to Hacks, it's like, fuck, what could I have done differently? You know what I mean? Always. So, anyways, I have my Sloking G in here. I'm able to outplay the Future Sight pretty well. I eat that shit up like it's nothing. I already know the Zama's uh, Choice Banded. I Chili Reception out, because uh, I have a Cobra Berry. So Crunch probably does 50. I know I live that shit regardless. Now here I chilly out and I thought to myself, what do I want to do? I can go Tusk and knock off some shit or I can go Cinderace and Will-O-Wisp and shit. I was like, dude, I think I can, I'd rather go Cinderace and Will-O-Wisp because Will-O-Wisp is the same shit as knockoff. It negates lefties. And I'm thinking if I can burn the Rotom or the Landorus, both of those are absolutely perfect for me, especially if I can burn Rotom. If I burn Rotom, then bulk up Tusk sweeps the shit out of this team with bulk up Rapid Spin Earthquake. Because first of all, Tusk beats all these guys. And then Rotom, you know, that's not a sturdy switch in at all once it's burned. It's just waiting to get chipped. So I'm thinking, okay, this will be fine. I chill out into my Cinderace. I don't want to waste time future sighting, right? I, like, I could have future sighted there, but in my mind, it's like, let's just go for the Will-O-Wisp, set the stage, and sweep his ass. So I bring in the shit. 
set the shit up, and I go for Willow Wisp, and I fucking miss. And I was like, dude, are you fucking kidding me? All that shit for nothing. Oh, dude, fuck. <laughs> Anyways, all that shit for nothing. I try to Wisp here, miss, whatever, is what it is. A U turn out, no need to get tilted. We can recover from this position. There's nothing that cannot be fucking fixed. Uh, he goes for a Volt Switch out of there, brings in his Landorus. Um, yeah, I can't really stay in here. I also know this is Grass Knot, so I have to worry about bringing in my Tusk. And this is actually kind of a nuisance. I bring in this here, knowing that he's either going to switch into Slow King, stay in and U turn. Those are his two plays. Either way, Cinderace covers both. And I refuse to Moonblast into Slow King G. Maybe I should have just Moonblasted there because he stays in. And I would have done a lot, but whatever. He brings in Zama here. I bring in my Slow King G. I know he's more, more than likely just going to CC. I feel this is a very free turn for him to scout it out. I get the play right, bring in my Slow King G, and I just chilly out, I believe. Yeah, I chilly out. Uh, here, I go into Ace because I was like, okay, now that dog has already used up its uh, defense boost. And it's gone for CC, showing it's not Iron Defense or anything. I'm thinking, let me burn this Landorus. And then my Gambit can sweep pre-Terra. Same with everything. So I go for Wisp here. I hit, which is great. But I really would have rather hit that Rotom. Because then I would have Court Changed here and thrown this shit out. And gone for the back sweep right this turn. But I didn't. Anyway, I go in a Great Tusk here as he goes for a U-turn. I'm thinking I honestly should have just Court Changed and sacked this shit. I'm thinking I honestly should have done that, to be honest with you. But I bring in Tusk on the U- I mean, I U-turn out and I bring in my Tusk as he goes for the U-turn of his own. And I'm thinking, okay, well, Rotom's in here. He's definitely going to Hydro Pump. Let me not, you know, stay in here and take that. I go into my Slow King G. I am max but depth, so I don't really have to worry about that too much. I think here I went for the, what, Future Sight? No, I actually Chili. Some fucking want of momentum all over the place. I bring in my backs here because, oh, I know I brought in my backs here. I need the initial chip on something. I go for the sub as he goes for the Volt Switch. That's fine with me. I'm going to get my leftovers back. Yeah, my backs is a little bit low on HP, but I already know it's going to go back to 70. And I also have Healing Wish on Enamorous. That's why I like this team a lot because you can Healing Wish one of the backs or the Gambit. The team has taken a decent amount of chips so far, so it's not looking amazing for me. But I knew it's not the worst case scenario. So... Vol switches out into his Cinder Ace. I'm going to go for the Ice Skull Crash here because I know this Ace is not going to Pyro Ball on my backs and die to an EQ for no reason. I know in his mind, it's like, oh shit, I'm about to U-turn into Rotomage. I'm about to U-turn into Zamazenta. I know he's not Pyro Balling. So I just go for a Ice Skull Crash of my own. In comes Zamazenta and I do a huge 47%, which is just excellent. I was like, great. This is perfect. Perfect. Um, switch out of there. Bring in my Slow King G on Crunch take 48 percent he makes a good play there i think i should have gone tusk because i believe i take two close combats anyway so i definitely should have gone tusk on crunch i think that was pretty obvious to be honest too in my head i was like dude he's gonna try hard crunch for sure but part of me was like rotom's not that i mean sloking's not that like necessary so i was like fuck it we can just go to it he goes for crunch though which is a great play on his part to not lose any momentum and i was like okay he's definitely been making a lot of plays where like he just wants to have the momentum up on his side the whole time and i'm thinking i need to get these rocks off asap because i'm playing from behind with that shit i know i missed the wisp on rotom but it's not like i can like keep saying oh shit if i hit that wisp like at this point i was like okay i gotta fix this some shit i gotta get these hazards off right yes my game plan didn't go forward because i missed the wisp but now you gotta fucking make a new game plan that's pokemon so i was like okay let's see what we can do um i get full parrot here oh that was fucking horrible i read his life i know he's gonna just switch out hard so even though I died to the second crunch, I was like, dude, I know you're going to make a tryhard play and switch as to not crunch into my great tusk and get let rocks off. It's very obvious. So I go for the fucking chili reception here to set my backs up again. This time for real with the ice body. It doesn't matter. Ice body would give me back even if I take rocks. But no, bro. Honestly, I don't know. Maybe I would have even court changed and gotten the rocks off. Regardless, I get the 25% para. So I was like, dude, fuck me. Like this should have been a back mini sweep right here. Whatever, he goes for Pump here as I Chili Reception out yet again, and I bring in the King Gambit. The reason I brought in King Gambit is because I'm like, okay, I already know this guy's probably going to Thunder Wave for no reason. Let me chip Rotom, right? Let me just let me just start chipping. I still have Healing Wish. It's not a big deal. Literally does go for fucking Thunder Wave because that's just how people play. Just Thunder Wave everything. Um, here, I go for SD because Landers is burned, and I know it's coming in, and I can just, you know, get rid of this. Stay at a high amount of HP, and then still healing wish this off later. But of course, instant full para after T-Wave and me. Keep it, keep it classy. So I was like, dude, fuck this shit. Um, I, I switch out of there because I literally cannot, you know, get fucked up by this. I thought about staying into SD, but 
I mean, I SD'd the other turn for that exact reason. Now, at this point, I'm like, okay, I have to spin. You know, I have to get these hazards off. It's the only way that I can really have a chance uh, further, like, going, for, uh, going forward. Rapid spin those rocks away. Bring in my Slow King G. Finally, I have the fresh turn to go for a chili reception. Bax is a 70. I mean, the shit is pretty much set to sweep, right? Once Ice Defense Boost Pack is kicks in, Pyro Ball doesn't do anything to the sub. This shit cannot break the sub because it's burned. Gambit has to Terra, and I'm also Terra Ground EQ, so I fucking send Gambit to the sky. I was ready to sweep, right? I was, like, ready to go. So I bring in Slow King. Finally got my free switch into Chili Reception. He goes into Lander's T as I fucking get full paired, which is outraged. I was like, dude, going to Lander's T is the only Mon on his team that gives my backs two free DDs. Like, you cannot pick a worse Mon to go into on turn 25. Anyways, I get full paired. There's nothing I could do about that shit. I go into backs because I know he's going for rocks now. And I'm like, dude, I gotta, I gotta get out of here. I can't, cause even if I chili into backs there, he doesn't care. Cause for him, it's like, oh, if I get up rocks, I do damage to the backs. So I go hard into my backs on rocks, knowing that okay, it's time. I get some lefties back. I'm like, okay, this is completely fine. He goes for U-turn here. Uh, he's faster than me. I think he has hella speed. Like I think it's max speed. Cause my backs has a lot of speed, but it's not max. Cause you know we gotta put some HP on that hoe. Um, Zama or whatever comes in here. I dragon dance up, and I'm like, okay, I just ice go crash, kill this, wh fucking miss. Miss Wisp, get full parrot every turn. Miss Ice Go Crash. So th th the game's done right here, first of all. It was also done on the turn that I SD'd into Landris, but whatever. The game was done right there. I kill Zama. His only play is to go Gambit, and then a Terra situation happens. If he Terras his Gambit, first off, your Gambit's dead to my shit, or it takes 99%. There's no way to get out of that situation. And then I just go to my own Gambit, and I sweep your ass, because I still have Terra in the back. Like, there's, there's no way to save yourself. But of course... 10% of the time, fucking goobed, missed, anyways, I go into Durndle Blunder there, and I double out, because I know if I bring that shit in, he's gonna go into his Slow King G, he's too ahead now, like, I've missed every move, every time my backs should have swept, he would get a full para, like, there was nothing, like, so I miss Ice Crash, I die, classic game, in comes Slow King G, King Gambit comes in on the double, because I was like, okay, that's good, I SD here, as he goes for the Chili Reception out, here I actually make a misplay, on turn 31, um, I should have switched and sacked my Slow King, but I go right for Terra. He misses Stone Edge. I get some Justice, and I go... Well, I went for another SD regardless, because I was like, well, okay. If he CCs and I SD, then I can sweep, because plus four kills this. I was like, hmm, maybe I win. Unfortunately, I get full parrot as usual. Um, I was like, okay, whatever, I live. I can still Healing Wish this shit back. Let me just kill the Zama. No, I get fucking full parrot again. And then here, I just forfeited, because I'm like, dude, this is fucking stupid. So, uh, congratulations to Thunder Wave for beating me this game. I, I won this shit five times. Like, obviously, I'm salty, but... My team was in such a do or die position where we can't like have games lost. So after seeing, I was like, dude, how is this possible? I definitely won this shit. Like, there's ways to have played better though, for sure. I shouldn't have let the Wisp miss tilt me so badly. And I definitely should have. There's one turn in particular where I should have. What's it called? Right here, I probably should have sacked Ace, court changed off the rocks, and brought in my backs afterwards. Because even if I die to EQ, I set up the sweep. I, I think mean, I start going for some shit. Or I can even just straight Ice Go Crash because he's going to bring in his dog. That's my only regret. But in my head, I was like, I don't want to sack my Cinderace. I might need that shit. But other than that, I don't really regret any anything besides, yeah, that one turn. There were definitely some other plays. But like, dude, this guy just fucking clicked Thunder Wave and crossed his fingers. And this right here was the greatest choke of all time. When he went Landorus hard on my chili reception aka the only mon that gives me back to 100 percent and full double dd like that's outrageous anyways i was obviously pissed after this game but it is what it is one one and like i said there's always ways to play better so if there was anything i should have done it was definitely just court change off the rocks but all my pokemon turned to fucking molasses thunder wave goobed me that's how it goes so yeah let's get into the next and final battle all right, all right, all right. Game three. Sorry, I had to pause the shift for a little bit. I had to get some water, you know, and I water because, you know, I was getting so thirsty and also because I might have just started crying after all bitching about all that hacks. Anyways, game three. Let's go. I played this this morning. Look at my team and tell me this isn't agency at its fucking core. Mousehold X walking wake walking goob. Come on now. Did you really think? Did you really think that the last game? I wouldn't bring the family. Like, the real... Did you really think one game was going to happen without MH equals PB? Please, have some respect for the agency. Of course I was going to bring Walking Wake. In my opinion, Walking Wake is one of the greatest Pokemon ever from a competitive standpoint. That shit is Keldeo 2.0, and it's a lot more powerful 
than Dragapult. Dragapult is a pussy. 299 special attack is nothing. Also, nice Shadow Ball. Meanwhile, I bring in my Walking Wake. There is no switching for this Drake. There is no switching for this Surf. Your shit's getting like sent to the moon. I love this Pokemon a lot. To me, it's very Keldeo-esque. The way Keldeo was in Gen 6. That's very long ago, but for those of you who remember, this is my new Keldeo. And me and Keldeo back then is just outrageous. I never get a play wrong. So I knew if I brought Wake, there's no chance I'm getting a play wrong. I'm up against Ruby Blood. This guy was 2-0 in our pool. So if he beats me, then he wins our pool. He beat the other two guys. He actually 6 0 both of them. So I was like, what the fuck? You think you're nice? Nah, but he's very respectful. Uh, I was getting ready for this game. I was like, this guy's no slouch. You know, he brought two pretty cool teams. He actually brought this team his last game. And when I look at this team, it, it just shows me that, okay, this is a player. As in, like, he brought six good Pokemon and trusts himself to play good. That's what this team shows me. So I was like, okay. I also was pretty sure based on the last two games of his that I saw in this tournament that he was going to bring something like this because he had brought teams like this. He 6 0 his opponents with setup sweepers, but it's not like he brought some dual screen shit. He just, you know, he set them up and they just swept his opponent. That's just how it went. So I was like, okay, I want to bring a mouse hold walking wake team. I didn't want to bring this team for some memes shit because to set the stage, my team had lost a lot of games yesterday. Um, I told you we had to go 6 and 2 to qualify, but I lost, which means we had to go 6 and 1. But we lost some more shit, too. So, at this point, I was the first game of the day. If we lose this game, we're out of the tournament. We have to win the, our, all four of our games. So, I had the pressure on me. I didn't feel like, oh, my God, oh, my God, that's the scariest game ever. Because it's also just like, come on, it's still, it's, still, it's still Mons. It's in your hand. You can get hacked, but you can always, you know, it's in your hands. So, I trust this team a lot. Mousehold X Walking Wake. Big shout-outs to my boy Giannis. He's another Pokemon battler. Very powerful player. I've posted some of his uh, tournament sets before in the past. But uh, I had him test this team out. I used this team for a couple games, but I didn't want to play too much with this team on ladder because it's a very unique six. A lot of teams have been getting stolen on the ladder. A lot of my CTC's teams have gotten stolen on the ladder, used in World Cup already before we could even get a chance for our team to use it just because it's a new metagame. People on the, high, on the high ladder are testing a lot of new shit. So I tested this shit in like 1300s for two games. I was like, mm, feels pretty good. I had my boy Giannis test it. He sent me some replays of him cooking everybody with this shit. I was like, all right, I'm ready to use this team is very cool it's very this is my favorite team this is my favorite team because it has a fucking mouse hole dude are you crazy we got regular slow king g chili reception spadef it's the best mon in the meta or top three at least moltres moltres and zapdos have similar purposes this is just meant to take all the physical attackers on i destroy great tusk if it's not stone edge or head smash a lot of them like to run ice spinner right now to check zapdos yeah have fun checking this i'm gonna fucking burn you uh valiant SD Valiant, Calm Mind Valiant, they all get exposed by Moltres because it resists Moonblast. Moltres is a very good Pokemon right now. If you've ever used Moltres in the past couple generations uh, defensively, even when it was ro a weak to rocks in Gen 6 and 7, you still know that Moltres defensively can do a lot of good stuff. Uh, this Pokemon, like, it, it, nothing changed. Heavy Duty Boots only made it better. So it definitely had a good spot on my team. My team Northeast had been using Moltres a good amount too, and a lot of teams have been using it because it's just, it's a good mod in the current metagame. I'm sure you guys have seen it on the ladder as well. It just checks a lot of stuff pretty well. Moltres has always had a very good defense stack. It's still strong. This is no slouch. With zero special attack investment, you still do um, so much with Flamethrower. Like, it's two, it's 286 special attack stat with no invest. So, Flamethrower still does like 35, 36% to Zamazenta, stuff like that. This thing is pretty strong. Next up, we have Garg. Did you really think? Did you really think I was going to play a World Cup game without the GOAT? Have some shame. I love Garg. And I love Pex. And I'm also sad that I couldn't bring Toxapex. Sloking G has made Pex bad, which is a shame because I love Toxapex in Gen 9. Yeah, 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 whatever. I always use Assault Vest. At least it's a cool set. Anyways, for some reason, Garg is the only gendered Pokemon on my team too. Oh, wait, no, Sloking. I didn't see that. <laughs> my is literally four, so can't do that. And then all Great Tusk is Great Tusk. Anyways, Scarface is here. Stealth Rock, Terra Fairy. Terra Fairy has an insane matchup versus his team. The second I saw his team, I was like, what the fuck? Terra Fairy's going to destroy him. Pult gets walled. Samrock gets cooked by Terra Fairy as well. Zapdos, I'm mixed defense, but I have hella spit F, so I'm not worried. Tusk gets walled to shit by me. I'm salt curing that. Heatran has to Terra to not get owned by salt cure. Valiant, I'm a fairy type, so good luck. You have to have substitute or some shit to beat me. So I knew immediately off the mat, like the lead, that salt was just going to go crazy. Mousehold. Now, Mousehold is not a meme pick. The reason we have Mousehold is because tidy up. The same reason I ran Cinderace. You can see that we like 
the uh, the different forms of hazard hazard removal that aren't rapid spin. Rapid spin is not foolproof versus ghost types, and I'm not fucking with that right now. Ting Lu plus Golden Go is one of the most annoying cores. The HO core, they get up all the hazards, then they sack their tank, their Golden Go, and then in comes Valiant Booster, in comes Sneezler on a Balloon, in comes Walking Wake at Booster. Fuck that shit. I'm not losing a hazards plus Booster. That's the most scrub way to lose. For them to get up all hazards and then Valiant kills everybody? No! I'm not going out like that. So we have Tidy Up Mousehold to make sure that no Golden Go, no nobody can stop the Tidy Up. I like Mouse for that reason. Mouse is a strong Pokemon. Don't get it twisted. We all know how strong Population Bomb is. That shit can Oko G-King. It can Oko Baxcalibur. Oko Zapto. That shit is not some weak little Mon. We all know Population Bomb is a literal Glaive Rush on steroids. Like, this This is Bax. They don't know that. Mousehold is literally Bax. Remember that. It's literally Baxcalibur, if not even stronger. But in my mind, Mousehold is always a support Pokemon first, attacker second. When I use the mouse, it's make sure the hazards are off and make sure I can encore a threat if shit gets out of hand. My team is not fast. My fastest spawn is a 353 mouse. 353 speed mouse and 349 speed wake. Team's slow as shit. I know the Pult and the Valiant are going to outspeed and goob everybody, so I have to keep that in mind. But also defensively, the defensive core I have for this team, the, the Scarface X, what's it called? Uh, Moltres Slowking is pretty solid as well. I know it's SD Samurai because this guy actually brought this team his last game so i mean the only set is sd that's the best set <laughs> shout out to you know us to creating it but either way i knew it was sd everything else i was like whatever it doesn't matter i just know the samurai's sd also based on his team it's not going to be lead anyway you run lead on hyper offense finally the last one on my team is booster tusk just plus speed kill everything i don't need stealth rock garg has stealth rock i lead off with walking wake aka reservoir slogs if you know what slog means plus one to you you're a very learned individual if you don't know what slog means, read a book. All right, it means to walk slow. So we go into Reservoir Slogs because we got the movie theme nicknames. Shout out the base lord. He leads off with Zapdos. I was like, oh, Zapdos, and so I thought to myself, maybe he thinks this is Dragapult. Let me show him something. We go for that Drake turn one, and it fucking dies. I was like, dude, no way it dies. I'm pretty sure that's a high roll. Like, <laughs> I'm happy at O code, obviously, but. If I had to guess, Zapdos probably has a way better chance to live that than to die to it. Either way, I was like, dude, he's not going to Heatran. Let's drop this hot one, and I kill it turn one. So I was like, yes! Most games, if you get a kill turn one, it is very hard to lose after that. It is very hard to lose after that. That's what I think, at least. Matchup and all that matters. But usually, the psychological destruction you put on an opponent by killing him on turn one... At least from my perspective, yo, you better win that shit. If you let them get their get their balls back after that, dude, you have really fucked up. All right. <laughs> so I go into Slow Dog Chillionaire because again, movie theme. You know the nicknames on point. As Magma Storm comes out, I thought about it and I was like, with Zapdos going down, I have already gotten a pretty great lead, right? Zapdos is just an annoying ass Pokemon. Whole team is now weak to Headlong Rush too. I had Ice Spinner, Terra Ice Tusk anyway, right? This team is fucking genius. Chili Reception Slowking into Terra Ice. Ice Spinner Great Tusk, a.k.a. I get the defense boost from Ice, a.k.a. we wall backs. A lot of y'all, a lot of y'all don't be even thinking like that. So, he goes for Magma Storm. Slow King G's viability versus his team is now, like, whatever. Or, it's just whatever. Like, I don't need it anymore. It was used to check Zapdos. Everybody else can beat it. This shit is whatever for me now. And I cannot go into Garg and let my Garg die when I know that's a way better check to most of his mons. I'm not switching that shit hard into... If I go into Garg on Magma Storm, I know then he's probably going to turn into a Grass type and taunt me and get rid of my Garg. And I do not want to lose my Garg for nothing like that. My Garg is not Terra Water either. It's Terra Fairy. So this is not no check to Heatran immediately. Either way, I go into Slow Dog Chillionaire. He goes for Magma Storm. This shit does nothing. I know Taunt's coming, so I just go for a Surf. I do about 50? 45 because I crit. So I would have done about 30, but I get an extra 15% with a crit. Definitely lucky. But after the last game I had, that Ice Crash, I take that shit to the bank. So... I was pleased with that. I was like, it's okay. I don't need slow dog. I can just surf, 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 surf. And now I have this thing at 39%. And I was like, dude, this is perfect. Not only is Static Zapdos dead, but Heatran, the other thing that can take Population Bomb, is now at 45% after my slow dog Chillionaire goes down. This thing is soon to get Population Bomb too. I didn't see him go for Protect ever, which made me kind of curious. And it made me think, okay, he certainly last move rocks. I'm thinking now the Tusk is most likely booster speed, Val is booster as well, and again, this is last move rocks. That's what I'm thinking. So I bring in this, and I'm thinking, okay, well, he's not protect, which means he's not going to turn into a grass type here in Magma Storm me. That's literally not going to happen. So I bring in my Reservoir Slogs, and I go for a Surf. Again, though, this ain't Pulp, baby. 
This is a strong boss. So Surf does 47 to Dragapult, right? He brings in Baba Yaga, but dude, this is the real John Wick. I'm telling you, this walking wake, this is the real John Wick. I go for Surf, it does a shit ton of damage. I know he's going to Draco Meteor here because it looks very free if you see my team, but I know Scarface is now ready to do his thing. That Drake does absolutely nothing to my boy. He eats it up like it's a motherfucking feast. Heatran comes in as I just recover. No need for me to tear it into a fairy type. I know minus two Drake is not killing at that range. I also know that Heatran is now weakened, so why not just go for a Salt Cure as he brings this in? So yeah, uh, I'm able to Salt Cure there. Uh, again, I don't think there's any reason for me to Terra. Even if he wants to go for a Hydro Pump, which will do about probably like 90-ish percent. Even if he wants to go for a Hydro, will it do 90? More like 80 or like 75. Even if he wants to go for that though, I know it's not a big deal. I can go for my rocks. I don't exactly need Scarface to win. He is just a nice Pokemon against the opponent. In comes this shit. Eh, stage 4 threat. I knew this shit was a monster immediately. I clicked that Terra button. No, fuck this shit. I'm not losing to this. <laughs> you really gonna bring SD Samuel versus me? Don't do that. Don't do that. I was like, okay. Let me let me just Terra up. I go for Assault Cure. Then I protect. Ah, good. Rely. Oh, reliable doing this thing. Oh, you go for a Razor Show. Oh, that's, that, that damage looking kind of light. I'm not gonna hold you. <laughs> Scarface gets back to fucking 1,000% while also putting up rocks. Come on, man. Classic Garg. Classic Garg display. What are you asking for otherwise? So here I was like, dude, this is epic. Brings in this. I was like, dude, let me get out of here. Oh, wait. I have the greatest counter of all time. One flew over to Hu'u Net. Come on, you would. Come on, bro. Look at these nicknames, bro. Put some respect on CTC's name. Put some fucking respect. Look at these nicknames. Please. Please. Anyways, SD's here. I know if it's SD or Calm Mind, it doesn't matter. This Moltres is cooking both. Goes for knockoff, but I'm literally max HP, max defense, bold Moltres. Like, I'm so defensive that knockoff does only 50. I know even if he wants to tear a dark here, you're not going to kill me. So either way, I'm going for Will-O-Wisp. I don't need this. Moltres. Moltres is good for this. And I'm not worried about Tusk when I have Encore, Walking Wake, and my own full Tusk. Not to mention I have a Fairy Salt that is going to Salt Cure this shit. Like, it's not, I'm not worried about no Tusk. I only need this to beat this. And unless you're Thunder Punch or Terra Dark, I'm cooking. Also, if he Terra Darks here, then he's literally going to get Surfed and he loses. Because Pult has one more Rock Switching. So I know he can't Terra this. Because otherwise, I'm literally going to Surf five times. And I'm pretty sure the Tusk is Terra Water or some shit at this point. Anyways, it goes for Knockoff. It does negative damage. I get Flame Body, but I go for Wisp anyway. So whatever down goes val um i was always burning it i roost here he should have probably just gone into his heat turn on wisp and tried to get the flash fire boost and do something dirty i really wouldn't have knocked off there i think maybe he was knock off encore or something I, but then he would encore on I, I don't know what he was maybe he just didn't want to burn maybe he didn't want to get burned and he thought fuck it i'll just go for it and then win with my tusk later i don't know either way he shouldn't have but i don't know it is, it is what it is so uh you i you turn out here and i bring him my walking wake he's already shown that he's probably not protect so i'm not worried magma does nothing to me because he's zero special attack i just go for a surf as samurai comes in samurai takes 59 percent from surf by the way so that shit is never a switch in regardless he brings in this i can take a spirit break but there's no reason for me to take damage when this is a pokemon that i need to oko the great tusk so i'm not taking damage for no reason Doubles out into his Heatran here, which is a good play as I bring in Moltres again. I just go for a U-turn, and I believe I bring in Slogs again. Dude, Reservoir Slogs is getting off the fucking goob nut. This shit has come in like 86 times this battle. Look at this beast. Look at this fucking sexy beast. Comes in here, Surf, 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 Surf. In comes Iron Valiant. I know that Surf killed like four Valiants, because that shit spit F is negative five. In comes Great Tusk gets the speed booster i'm thinking okay either you kill me with headlong because i eq doesn't even kill res this because this is a bulky pokemon so either you kill me with e uh, headlong rush and you take a defense boost and i bring in my own tusk and i wrap this up or you terra water and we still wrap this up terra water's here uh because he's plus speed i know he's max hp so i know this won't to a ko and it does about 41 percent which is fine i go into moltres in case he wants to spin eq whatever he wants to do as he does go for an eq here he reveals the head smash i'm not a fan of head smash for this exact reason while he does kill my moltres bro literally dies alongside and then i go into my own tusk and it's groundhog day baby and technically groundhog's day but that's gonna be that Headlong rush him. Terra has been used up. I am my own plus speed booster, and he forfeits because the other two are just going to get killed by headlong. So, very happy with how this game went. He, I mean, this went exactly the way I saw it, it going down, um, matchup-wise. When I saw the matchup, I was like, I don't think he can win. Um, and that's literally what happened. Like, he couldn't win. Turn one, Draco Media roll on Zap. Again, I'm pretty sure that's a high roll on my part. Helped me a lot, but hey, 
I got no complaints. I think I played this shit great. Got every turn, did exactly what I needed to. Very straightforward game. Walking Wake is epic. I'm happy that that shit cooked them because I feel like people do not respect Wake at all. They don't. They just don't run specs. You need to run casual specs. Don't run agility with hazards like a pussy. Don't run it on sun either. Run specs off sun. All right. That's what the dawns run. Shout out to Mousehold. I'm sorry that it didn't come out of the entire game, but just know that we love the mouse over here. It just it just couldn't do its thing. And with that. We have my return to tournaments. I go 2-1. I feel like I definitely should have been 3-0 after this ice crash bullshit. <laughs> but as I said before, you can always play a game better, and I could have played that game better too. I'm pretty happy with what happened. Unfortunately, right after my win, we got eliminated. <laughs> we lost our next game. Uh, unfortunately, now we, we will not be going to the playoffs. So I end here with my three games, 2-1. I'm very happy with how I played, to be honest. I think I played some of the best mods I've played in a while. Gen 9, I love this shit. I think it's so fun. I love Terrastalize. I think it's an amazing mechanic. I hope nothing happens to it. And I also think that Terrastalize is a huge skill in Gen 9. And that's something I gotta say. I have never felt like, oh my god, Terra. No, if, 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 it's, if you don't understand what Terra's into what at this point, that's a lack of experience on your part and judgment calling in battle. Sorry, that's, that's on you. Sorry, that's how I feel about Terra. Everyone has their own opinion, and I also don't... I'm also not going to be like, Oh, you don't like Terra? You're fucking stupid, blah, blah, blah. But my opinion is that Terra is the skill of Gen 9. And I do think if Gen 7 came out today, the people who whine about Terra would have absolutely banned Z moves. Because they would have been like, Dude, how can you Rocky MZ my landers for the Oka? Dude, have you ever heard of just switching to your resist? Why can't you switch? Why can't you predict for once? So, that's all I got to say. Either way, I'm very happy with my games. Had some haters going into this. People saying I was going to go winless. Like, are you fucking crazy? Come on now. Had a good time, though. I, w I just wish my team got, like, a tiebreak chance or something. Because I already know I would have fucked it up in the tiebreak. And we would have gone to the playoffs and gone on a super streak. <laughs> I'm trying to will it into existence. Fortunately, we're eliminated now. I don't know if I'm going to play tournament again. This should definitely reawaken my competing, like, spirit. I really like Gen 9. I think you can run some cool ass shit. I had a blast bringing the teams I brought, even when I brought shit that's not, you know, Meyer CTCs. I still like this team a lot. Like, I think the teams are cool. I like that. I don't have any complaints. Yes, there is some shit that is annoying. I get it. Losing to King Gambit, learn to play. So, yeah, I don't know when the next tournament I'm going to play is. I don't think I'm going to play the Smogon Champion League, but I might play Smogon Premier League in the, fall, in the winter, which would be the first time I've played it in four years. Uh, I don't know, though. I love Gen 9, and I want to play more. And also, I'm the best Gen 9 player alive by far. So, I need I need to go play some more tournament games. Like, my journey cannot end here with this shit. I need, I need to keep going. I need to keep taking souls. This is the best Gen ever. Anyways, hope y'all enjoyed. Drop a big like. I probably will upload some shit. I'm sorry I didn't post for two weeks, but I was preoccupied with this shit. Anyways, I don't really have a team that I'm rooting for going forward. But I think my boys, uh, Soul Wind... Uh, my boy Soulwind and Roses are still, and my boy McMegan are still in the tournament. So I wouldn't mind any of my boys just winning, but I really don't care which team wins now. Anyways, hope y'all enjoyed. Long vid, some good tournament stuff. Let me know what y'all thought in the comments below. We'll see y'all soon. Shaboing.